Good morning, Bulldogs. My name is Mrs. Sanderson. And I'm Mrs. Clifton. And today we have a special social distancing version of Good Morning Bulldogs for you, where Mrs. Clifton and I are both recording from our separate houses. So we will be reading the book, The Invisible String. It was written by Patrice Karst, and it was illustrated by Joanne Lou Raiha. The book is dedicated to the children of the world and the magic of their strings. Liza and Jeremy, the twins, were asleep one calm and quiet night. Suddenly, it began to rain very hard. Thunder rumbled until it got so loud that it woke them up. Mommy, mommy, they cried out as they ran to her. Don't worry, you two. It's just the storm making all that noise. Go back to bed. We want to stay close to you, said Jeremy. We're scared. Mom said, you know, we're always together no matter what. But how can we be together when you're out here and we're in bed, said Liza. Mom held something right in front of them and said, this is how. Rubbing their sleepy eyes, the twins came closer to see what mom was holding. I was about your age when my mommy told me about the invisible string. I don't see a string, said Jeremy. You don't need to see the invisible string. People who love each other are always connected by a very str special string made of love. But if you can't see it, how do you know it's there? asked Liza. Even though you can't see it with your eyes, you can feel it with your heart and know that you are always connected to everyone you love. When you're at school and you miss me, your love travels all the way along the string until I feel it tug on my heart. And when you tug it right back, we feel it in our hearts, said Jeremy. Does Jasper the cat have an invisible string? Liza asked. She sure does, said mom. And best friends like me and Lucy, asked Liza. Best friends too. How far can the string reach? Anywhere and everywhere, mom said. Would it reach me even if I were a submarine captain deep in the ocean? Asked Jeremy. Yes, mom said, even there. Or a mountain climber? Even there. A dancer in France? Even there. A jungle explorer? Even there. How about an astronaut out in space? Yes, even there. Then Jeremy quietly asked, can my string reach all the way to Uncle Brian in heaven? Yes, even there. Does the string go away when you're mad at us? Never, said mom. Love is stronger than anger. And as long as love is in your heart, the string will always be there. Even when you get older and can't agree about things like what movie to see, or what game to play in the back seat, or what time to go to the bed. Oh, that's right. You two should be in bed. And with that, they all laughed as mom chased the twins back to their beds. Within a few minutes, they were asleep, even though the storm was still making the same loud noises outside. As they slept, they started dreaming of all the invisible strings they have and all the invisible strings their friends have, and their friends have, and their friends have. Until everyone in the world was connected by invisible strings. And from deep inside, they now could clearly see. No one is ever alone. 
we hope you enjoyed the story of the invisible string. And we felt this story was so appropriate, especially for right now, after hearing unsettling news that the school building would be physically closed for the rest of the year and um, worrying about loved ones and your friends that you're not able to see. So Mrs. Clifton and I came up with two really fun crafts to help connect and show your love for those friends and family members. So the first one is a friendship bracelet. So typically whenever you make a friendship bracelet, you might give it, you might make it for someone and then give it to them. So this one's a little bit different. It's actually going to be one that you make for yourself and you can put different pieces into it that will remind you of those uh, loved ones. So any of your, those friends and family. So everything that is in my bracelet is things that I have um, just saved over the years. So if a bracelet breaks or um, a keychain breaks, I always keep those pieces for a craft later. So you don't have to buy anything. So for my bracelet, I found a green bead that is from a bracelet that I wore whenever um, Mr. Clifton and I first started dating. So it just reminds me of him. And it's also his favorite color, it's green. The second one that I have is a bead that's Arkansas quartz. So I'm from Arkansas, so a lot of my uh, family live there, and it's a place that's really close to my heart. And I do have a lot of friends there too, so it represents my friends and family back home. I also have a bead that's actually from my lanyard from school. So um, it broke and I saved that bead and it just reminds me of my Stranahan family and my students. And so I wanted to incorporate that in. I also have this bead right here and it came from a bracelet that my grandmother gave me. So it represents my grandparents. In addition to the beads, I also used a little bit of embroidery floss. So each color in it represents someone else. So the green string represents my dog Bennett because his collar and his leash are green. And then there's a blue string and it represents my other dog Oscar because his signature color is blue. I also have a yellow string and yellow is the color of friendship. So it is representative of all of my friends. Mrs. Clifton, that is a super cute bracelet. You should send me a picture of that. Will do, Miss Sanderson. For the second craft, we thought that you might want to hang something on your wall or physically see it when you're not seeing those friends and family members in real life. So what you can do is take random pieces of string, ribbons, wrapping, or fabric from around your house that remind you of those people or those things that you enjoy doing and put them on a tree branch or a straight piece of wood. So I have here the beginning of my wall tapestry craft. Um, I just used a white piece of uh, wood that I had over my house. And each of these strings and ribbons I found that helped me connect back to things that I was either missing out on doing or people that I loved or uh, people that I wasn't able to see. So this first one is for my son, Grant. This is actually a uh, yarn from a wall tapestry I made for his room. And this one is from um, one of my friends who lived in a different state to remember that even though I can't see those friends, I can still reach out to them. This dark blue one is um, from my sister's wedding. And my sister has cystic fibrosis. So I'm also thinking about those people who are being kept safe by those of us that are staying home by not spreading the virus um, and also helps me remember my family members. And all I did to add these was just tie a, a knot on this ribbon to put it on. And I'd obviously add some more, but this is the start of it. And this blue one that I added is actually a string from a dress that I usually wear on open house or the first day of school to help me remember that I'm really missing my students and being a normal teacher in a normal school building right now. So the adults in your lives are feeling this way too, but we thought it would be fun to potentially have something that you could wear on your wrist or hang in your house or your bedroom as a fun craft to both remind you that this will end and remind you that those invisible strings are constantly connecting us and helping us stay together. 
Miss Anderson, that is such a beautiful idea. I love that so much. I'm going to have to make myself one. I just feel like you're going to be filled with joy every time you see it. Thanks, Mrs. Clifton. And these crafts are also a great reason to call or FaceTime or reach out to a friend or family member who you're not able to see and say, hey, look what I just made as an icebreaker and a great way to touch base with those people. Bulldogs, we can't wait to see those projects. Have a great day, Bulldogs. Take care.